Hey babe, we should do this eh. Hmm? Hey, what are you doing? Wait, I'm doing skincare. You want? Come, come, come. Do, do together, do together. No, no, no. Hey, use yourself skincare. Very good, this? very good for your skin. It makes your skin glow. Hey? Why? Why can't you feel my face? See, so small eh. Should be okay la. What a scam, you sure or not? Should be okay. This has never happened to me before. Mm -hmm. Moisture seeping in your skin, mm. it's so good, right? Mm. Yeah, you can't feel your face also too big, uh. I mean, yeah, what cannot feel? Uh. Why? Uh? I thought my face quite small. One. Eh? What about it? Hmm. Hey! I can do a little experiment to help you. So many people nowadays care more about how they look like on the outside, whether they have acne, blackhead, or pimples, or whatever. So, we must find out how to make an indiscriminate mask that fits everyone, right? Oh, right. But first, we need to find out what are the independent variables that affect the face size of young adults. Hi. Mm -hmm. Um, weight? Hmm, gender? Age. Mm hmm, okay. Um, maybe age won't affect the face size so much. In, the case, in this case, because we are already limiting our research to young adults between the ages of 18 to 25. Due to the small range, it is unlikely that age will be a statistically significant independent variable. After we have listed out the factors that could affect the size of an individual's face, we need to find out what, which factor is most significant. We find that by using linear regression. Firstly, we split the size of the face into two components, face length and face width. Secondly, we form equations. We have two regression equations. The first regression equation will include the face length as the dependent variable and female height and weight as the independent variables. The second regression equation 1b will include the face width as the dependent variable with the same three independent variables. Based on our regression model, we can conclude that gender is the most significant factor that affects the face size of a young adult. We can see that the factor female has a p-value less than 0.05, while the factors height and weight have p-values that are more than 0.05. As such, gender is the only statistically significant factor that affects both the face length and the face width at 5% significance level. We have decided to use males as our baseline group. Thus, looking at the coefficient for female, we can interpret the regression 1a to be a 1 unit increase in female would lead to a 17.3 mm decrease in the face length. The interpretation for regression 1b would be a 1 unit increase in female would lead to a 34.4 mm decrease in face width. So we can say that males usually have a longer face by 17.3 mm and a wider face by 34.4 mm. Thus, we can conclude that the average male face is larger than the average female face and is more likely to not be able to fit into the typical face size of a mask. After concluding that gender is the most significant factor that affects the face size, we need to find out if both biological genders are able to fit within the average facial sheet mask. Through our online research, we have gathered that the average facial sheet mask is 230 mm in width and 205 mm in length. We can make use of hypothesis testing at 5% significance level to test the face length and face width of male and female against the average facial sheet mask length and width. So firstly, for female face length, we put the null hypothesis as mu is less than or equal to 205 mm, meaning that the average female face length can fit within the average facial sheet mask length. The alternative hypothesis is mu is more than 205 mm, meaning that the average female face length cannot fit within the average facial sheet mask length. Similarly, for female face width, we put the null hypothesis as mu is less than or equal to 230 mm, meaning that the average female face width can fit within the average facial sheet mask width. The alternative hypothesis is mu is more than 230 mm, meaning that the average female face width cannot fit within the average facial sheet mask width. Since we are using the sample mean and sample standard deviation, we'll be using the t-test statistic. So we know that we can find the value of the t-test statistic using the following formula. So for f length, we derive the p-value to be more than 0.05. Hence, we do not reject our null hypothesis at the 5% significance level and conclude that the average female face length is within the average face sheet mask length of 205 mm. For f width, we derive the value to be more than 0.05 as well. Hence, we do not reject our null hypothesis at the 5% significance level and conclude that the average female face width is within the average face sheet mask width of 230mm. Thus, we can conclude that the average female face can fit within the average facial sheet face mask. Similarly, we also did the hypothesis testing at 5% significance.
fitness level to test the face length and face width of males against the average facial shape, mass, length and width. So for F length, we derive the p-value to be significantly less than 0.05 as we will reject our line hypothesis at the 5% significance level and conclude that the average male face length is longer than the average face shape mass length of 205 mm. For F width, we derive the p-value to be significantly less than 0.05 as well as we would reject our line hypothesis at 5% significance level and conclude that the average face for the male width is wider than the average face shape mass width of 230 mm. Thus, we can conclude that the average male face cannot fit within the average facial shape mass. Now that we have proven that males are unable to fit into the facial shape mass sold in the market, we need to figure out how to improve the facial shape mass such that they fit into the faces of the young males. To do that, we will need to first find out which part of the face shape mass we need to make changes to. Some possible factors that can affect the face length of male include the forehead, nose, and jaw. Hence, with the length of the male face as the dependent variable and the length of forehead, length of nose, and length of jaw as the independent variables, we have come up with the linear equation F length equals to forehead plus nose plus jaw. The result from this regression model show that the length of a male's jaw has a p value of less than 0.05, and hence it is significant in contributing to a longer face. Hence, this means that we will need to increase the length of the jaw area or the facial sheet mask to make it fit male faces. Now that we know we have to increase the length of the jaw area of the sheet mask, the question now would be, how much longer do we have to increase it by? To find out the optimal jaw length for our facial sheet mask, we use a 95% confidence interval to find the range that contains the male population average jaw length 95% of the time. From the results, we can ensure that the sheet mask is able to fit 95% of the male faces by increasing the jaw length of the sheet mask to the upper limit of the confidence interval, 87.1 mm. Similarly, to find out the optimal width of a facial sheet mask, we use a 95% confidence interval to find the range that contains the male population's true average face width 95% of the time. From the results, we can ensure that the sheet mask is able to fit 95% of the male faces by increasing the width of the sheet mask to the upper limit of the confidence interval, 262.6 mm. As you can see, this is no ordinary face mask. It's larger, of course, and we have increased the jaw length to 87.1 mm and the face width to 262.6 mm. But wait, 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 that's not it. It's perforated too. So for those female users who want to use our face mask as well, you can simply tear it off. Wow. Hey, you now the mask fits my face. They're so amazing. Eh? Mm. That's good. We can do skincare together next time. Yeah. Hmm, it's a bit too big. Let me just tear it off. So get your own TIY mask.